Welcome back, everyone. My name is Patrick. You're watching the Oilers Rundown. Well, after last night's game, I think the number one topic on everybody's mind is Edmonton Oilers goaltender Jack Campbell. Started the season down, had a nice little stretch there, won a bunch of games in a row, I believe, at least 8, 9, or 10. Looked like Jack Campbell had finally turned a corner, but... Thanks to Bruce McCurdy, take a look at his last five starts. Edmonton Oilers lose 5-4 to four to Detroit in a shootout, lose 5-4 to four to the New York Rangers in a shootout, lose 6-5 to five to the Colorado Avalanche in overtime, 6-5 to five to the Columbus Blue Jackets, and now last night 7-5 to five to the Winnipeg Jets. In five games played, he allows 23 goals. Stuart Skinner, I know, went in in that Columbus Blue Jackets game. I can't remember if he got called in in any of the other ones. We all thought he was going to get called in for the third period last night against the Winnipeg Jets. It's just not good, guys. Jack Campbell, five times five. Five million bucks a year. Four more years left on that contract. I want to be a big Jack Campbell supporter. I went out after they signed him. I bought this puck. I was excited to get him. But I think we've all seen the struggle. And I mean, this just can't continue. It can't. The Oilers are in a playoff race right now. And of course, in those games, it's not all on Jack Campbell. Plenty of the blame can go on the defense in front of him as well. But the Oilers are scoring a lot of goals in those hockey games. Four, four, five, five, and five in those last five games. And that's not enough to get the Oilers wins. The Oilers scored five goals on Connor Hellebuck last night, and they didn't walk away with the win. Well, we're past the trade deadline now, and even if we weren't past the trade deadline, I'd still tell you there was absolutely zero chance the Oilers were trading Jack Campbell. But as we go ahead here, a lot of it's going to come down to how the Oilers perform here the rest of the way, how they perform in the playoffs. If a couple months from now we're talking about the Oilers as Stanley Cup champions, Jack Campbell is the hero, I don't think we're even having the Jack Campbell discussion come summertime. But if it comes down to Jack Campbell letting the Oilers down here over the next couple months, he is certainly going to be a major topic for the Oilers come summertime. I want to be talking about things like Eric Carlson possibly coming in at the draft. Not really talking about how the Oilers managed to get rid of Jack Campbell. Because if this continues, like, can you really go into year two of that contract just hoping he bounces back? Maybe Ken Holland will do that. Maybe it's all for nothing right now. But I don't know, guys. The only move the Oilers can make at this point is to send Jack Campbell to the AHL down to Bakersfield. Hope he can find his game down there and bring up Calvin Pickard or Olivier Rodrigue, most likely Calvin Pickard, and just go with Skinner and Pickard the rest of the way, or at least for a short stretch of time. I imagine if the Oilers do send Jack Campbell down, it won't be for a very long period, maybe a couple weeks, and then they bring him back up again. But that's basically their only move right now. I mean, and I feel for the guy, absolutely. It's I hate doing like a video like this where we're talking about him because... Jack Campbell seems like the nicest guy in the world. I'm sure he's loved in that locker room. I want him to succeed. I'm sure most of Oil Country wants him to succeed. We don't get these players and hope that they fail. So it's a really hard topic to cover, and I hope Jack Campbell can turn it around here. I don't like doing negative things about the Oilers, but just it's been a streak here now the last five games, like the amount of goals that Jack Campbell has let in. We got to talk about it a bit, so I don't know, guys. Say it. An AHL stint seems like the only thing the Oilers can do at this point. There's no trade option. If you want to talk about a buyout for Jack Campbell, it's an ugly one. Jack Campbell would be on the books for the next eight seasons for the Edmonton Oilers with cap hits of 1.5, 1.1, 2.3, 2.6, 1.5, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 1.5 and 1.5 over those eight years. So the biggest hits would come in 2025, 2026, and 2026, 2027, when he has that 2.3 and $2.6 million cap hit. So if we look in the savings category, the Oilers would have some immediate savings of $3.4 which they could use to get a replacement goaltender. 
three point eight in twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five, two point six in twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six, and then in twenty twenty six, twenty seven, two point three, and then from twenty twenty seven on, it's a negative cap savings, of course, because Jack Campbell's contract will be up. So he's just basically costing the Oilers money at that point with not even playing for them. I don't think the Oilers would be able to move Jack Campbell's contract in the summer unless they're bringing back something big. I'm guessing possibly in an Eric Carlson contract, you move Jack Campbell and then that would save the Sharks needing to retain some money somewhere. But even still, do the San Jose Sharks want Jack Campbell for four more years? So I don't know, guys. We'll talk about it more come summertime if it's still a problem then. And I'm hoping we're talking about a Stanley Cup for the Edmonton Oilers and we don't even have to bring up Jack Campbell. That's my sincere hope. So just thought I'd bring that up for now, guys. Share what a bio would look like. Just give my thoughts on it. But yeah, it's a rocky situation and... Like I said, I really hope Jack Campbell can just turn this around and this isn't a focus or a topic here going forward. And while last night was disappointing with the Oilers' loss, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl setting new club records. Leon Dreisaitl sets a new club record with his 25th power play goal of the season and Connor McDavid sets a new club record with the assist and his 58th power play point this season. And with the assist on Dreisaitl's power play goal, Connor McDavid has passed Wayne Gretzky for the most power play points in a single Oilers season with 58 points. A few trade deadline notes from last night. Elliot Friedman shared on 32 Thoughts that the Edmonton Oilers did put in an offer to the San Jose Sharks for Timo Meyer. Timo Meyer, of course, eventually went to the New Jersey Devils, but definitely interesting that the Oilers did at least make an attempt to bring in Timo Meyer because that really wasn't talked about. I think someone kind of mentioned in passing that the Oilers did have interest. I believe it was David Pagnota with the fourth period, but we didn't really hear Meyer and the Oilers connected a lot. Obviously, they didn't end up with Meyer in the end, but certainly could have been a great pickup for the Edmonton Oilers. And the other target that Elliot Friedman mentioned, Zach McEwen, who was with the Philadelphia Flyers, but eventually ended up with the LA Kings. Tyson and I talked about him on our trade deadline recap on Friday, so... He would have been another interesting pickup for the Oilers. Could have been a very different trade deadline overall for the Oilers, but I'm certainly happy with Matthias Ekholm and Nick Bukestad. And speaking of Nick Bukestad, he made his Oilers debut last night, scored a nice little gimme goal from Connor Hellebuck, and he was playing in his 600th NHL game. And I've had people asking me when Evander Kane is expected to return. Last we heard from Ken Holland on Friday is that it's probably going to be another week for Kane. Taking a look at the schedule here, I imagine he's a possibility for Toronto next Saturday, but probably more likely returning against the Ottawa Senators on the 14th or the Dallas Stars on the 16th, but that's pretty much the latest on Evander Kane there. Of course, dealing with that rib injury, and the Oilers obviously don't want to rush him back as the ribs are obviously very delicate, so you want to make sure Evander Kane is 100% ready to go. Well, I think that's all for now, guys. Clem Costin did miss last night's game with a reported wrist injury. I don't think it's too serious, though, so hopefully he should be able to come back against the Buffalo Sabres on Monday. But uh, yeah, I think that's all the latest from Oil Country. haven't really taken a look at what the Oilers roster will look like heading into the playoffs, so here's a look here for you guys. It was an exciting trade deadline, bringing in Matthias Ekholm, bringing in Nick Bustad. Like I mentioned, Timo Meyer, Zach McEwen almost brought in for the Oilers. So we'll see what happens here, guys. Hopefully Stuart Skinner can take the reins. Hopefully Jack Campbell can find his game. The Oilers got a big stretch here coming up. Some more tough games against Boston, Toronto. It goes on. So the Oilers are in a battle here to secure first place in the Pacific, secure a playoff spot overall. And let's just hope the Oilers can get it done and get in the best position possible for the playoffs. Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comment section below. If this is your first visit to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. Thanks for being a fan. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.